Hey everybody, welcome back. <clears throat> so today what I'm going to be looking at are uh, cheap meters versus good meters and can you calibrate uh, cheap meters to be as accurate or pretty close within a few percent of uh, more expensive uh, well calibrated devices. Now both of these flukes, my Fluke Oscilloscope 19102 and my Fluke 287 uh, process meter uh, both of these get calibrated annually. Um, and I send them out to Fluke to get them calibrated, so I know they're they're pretty close dead on the money. Uh, this one here is a Centec autometer. Um, I think that it's running about thirty something, forty something dollars to Harbor Freight. Uh, this particular one is part number ninety five six seventy. This one has uh, I've always questioned its readings on how accurate it is. Um, and that's indicative of most cheap multimeters. Uh, as a general rule of thumb, uh, you can get an entry level meter for under about $100. Uh, anything over about $200, you start getting into the mid grade uh, slash semi professional. Um, and when you get up into the five, six hundred plus dollar range, um, you start to get into the professional meters. Uh, this Fluke oscilloscope here uh, is about $4,500. This uh, Fluke 287, I think I paid about $750 for it. Um, and like I said, I send them out annually for calibration to fluke. So what I got set up here, uh, I have my two fluke meters here. They're hooked up to my power supply. Uh, this power supply has not been calibrated, uh, but what I'm going to use it for is just a voltage output for comparison. Um, so I have my two fluke meters hooked up together to the output for my power supply because I want to check to make sure these two meters are within range of each other. Um, and then I'm going to disconnect one of them and use my Fluke oscilloscope in the meter range to check and see how accurate it is against this Centec. Um, I don't expect this to be accurate, <clears throat> but one thing I want to look at is can you adjust these or can you calibrate these at home if you have somebody or know somebody who has uh, kind of a higher end meter or scope. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. So. <clears throat> When you calibrate anything, you want to start at both the low end, <coughs> excuse me, you want to start at the low end, the mid range, and the high end of voltage. And you want to check calibration at all three points. Um, so here I have my power supply set to 2.6 volts. Um, let me zoom in on these meters. I have a uh, 2.67 on this one, and I got 2.6. Uh, 2.6789 and 2.678 um, so they're within a percent of each other uh, so I know that those are, are pretty close so I'll zoom you out we'll go up to 10 volts And you can see this power supply isn't calibrated either. Uh, it looks like it's about maybe a quarter of a volt or a half a volt off. So uh, what I got on the 287, I have 10.09 volts DC and I got 10.08 volts DC on my oscilloscope. So now I'll max this power supply out. And we'll let that settle out. The refresh rate on this Fluke oscilloscope is set a little higher. I can increase the refresh rate on this 287, um, but I kind of like the slow reading. Um, I occasionally increase it if I need to see uh, fast rise changes or anything like that. Uh, but I generally have that one set a little slower because that's my primary diagnostic meter. Um, so we got 15.250 uh, on this one and 15.23 on this one. 2.4, it's kind of bouncing around. Uh, and some of those, some of that might be the independence of the meter leads uh, because the oscilloscope here has a longer set of leads and a different type of connector. Um, they have the, the fine tip clamp connector uh, where these just have the alligator style connectors. So now that we know that our fluke meters are relatively accurate, we'll turn our power supply all the way down. <coughs> I'm going to disconnect my 287 and slide it out of the way. And then we'll set up 
the Centec meter and my Fluke oscilloscope and hook those up. <clears throat> Okay, so I got the meters hooked up. We'll do the same thing as before. Uh, we'll check it at low range, mid range, and high range. And then we'll look and see once we <clears throat> know how far these are apart in terms of reading, um, we'll open this one up and see if there's any uh, adjustment potentiometers. Almost all meters or measuring devices, doesn't matter if it's voltage, amperage, temperature. Um, they usually have some type of adjustment pot, trim pots. Um, this meter here, does volts AC and DC. Uh, it has a dwell function on it for working on motors. And it also has a tachometer um, with an inductive pickup that comes with this meter. Uh, and it goes from three cylinder to eight cylinder. Um, so it allows you to see engine RPM on small engines all the way up to V8s. Um, so the thing we're gonna be checking primarily today is the DC voltage. Um, and I may throw another video together checking on AC. Um, and if I get time, I might hook this up to a VFD that I have and we can check frequency uh, in Hertz and see where it's at there. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll start out at the low range. We'll go to two and a half volts. So I showed 2.5 volts on my power supply. I got uh, 2.517 on my Fluke and 3.4 on the Syntec. So now I'm gonna go up to 10 volts, the same place we checked previously. And I got 10.10 uh, on my Fluke and 13.9 on the Syntec. Uh, so it's off by a pretty good amount. Um, and typically when meters are off, uh, reading wise, it's linear. So the higher voltage you get, the, the higher drift you get between the readings. Um, on low voltage stuff, below 24 volts, it's not really that critical. Uh, if you start working on high voltage stuff, anything above 120 volt, uh, myself personally, I work up to 12,470, about 13,000 volts utility power. Um, so I need my meters to be very accurate uh, because this kind of deviation at this low of range, when you get up to 13,000 volts, it could be a couple thousand volts difference between one meter and the other. Um, so we got about 13 or 3.8 volt difference at the mid range. So we'll go all the way up as high as my power supply goes. We got 15.25 on the Fluke and 21 on the Syntec. And that's uh, what almost six volt difference um, so you can see how how far the readings get apart the higher you go in voltage um, and when you switch over to ac you typically see even a larger difference uh, or if you get above 60 volts dc uh, you'll see that difference start to grow exponentially so let me get all this disconnected uh, i'll open up this simtech meter um, and i'll be right back so I got the Syntec meter tore apart, just to got the back taken off of it. Uh, it has several adjustment points. It's kind of hard to see. I'll get it focused in a little better here in a minute. Uh, so we got an adjustment pot up here. Um, this looks like our voltage. We have a CL and FL adjustment pot. Uh, those are probably for Celsius and Fahrenheit adjustment. We have HZ, which is Hertz. So this is gonna be our frequency adjustment. And then we have RPM and dwell pots down here. Um, and that's gonna be for our engine RPM and our dwell. We have another one down here that's TH. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, uh, but we may look into that. That may be for this NPN PNP tester uh, to determine the offset on it. So the first thing you wanna check with any multimeter, doesn't matter if it's a, 
a cheap $20 meter, a $100 meter, or a $1,000 meter uh, to check the batteries. Um, this one does have a, a battery indicator on it, um, and it shows up here in the corner, so the battery is getting low. Uh, and as we've seen, we had up to about a 5.5 or 6 volt difference. So the first thing you want to do before you start adjusting it is to put a new battery in it just to see if that makes any difference in the reading. Uh, because as the batteries start to die in all test equipment, <clears throat> your readings can start to deviate pretty far um, from what they should be. So I got a new battery put in. We'll hook the leads up. And without making any adjustment, we'll see what difference we're at. So yeah, that's a little more reasonable. Uh, we have 12.57 or 12.25 on the Fluke. We got 13.1 on here. Um, so we have about a four volt difference just replacing the battery. Um, and the difference is this is now lower than the Fluke. Uh, but now that we see that it has adjustment pots back here, we can turn this uh, to match a calibrated device. Uh, so the way we're going to do it, we're going to bring this back down to two and a half volts. <clears throat> That's about as close as it's going to get. I got it at uh, 2.499. So we show 2.1 on this one. So we're going to take a precision screwdriver and put it in this pot here and rotate it to see if we can get that reading to come up. Okay, let me change the scale on it because we're in low voltage, so I have now the scale set to 20 volt. Um, so we got 2.56 on here. So we'll adjust this pot a little more. Okay, that's about as good as we're gonna get. Uh, this meter here reads over to the third decibel place. Uh, this one only goes over two. So we'll leave it at 2.5. So now, hang on just a second. So now we'll go up in voltage on our power supply. We'll go up to 10 volts. And so that's pretty close. Uh, we're, it's kind of bouncing around a little bit. It looks like we're within 0.01 of a volt at our mid-range. So now we'll max it out and see what we got. So yeah, and still within, uh, looks like about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a volt, still kind of bouncing around a little bit. Um, and some of that, like I said, might be the independence of the leads. Uh, my Fluke has uh, six foot leads on it with uh, these precision clips. And this has a little set of three foot leads. So you'll get a little different uh, independence between the leads, but Overall, that's pretty close for a four you know forty dollar meter, um, and that's going to get you in the ballpark of where you need to be. We can probably tweak that just a hair more. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. So now I actually trust this meter. Um, now I wouldn't use it on any high voltage applications, uh, but for low voltage stuff, just piddling around the shop or you know checking charging systems on cars, um, I'm fairly certain that this is going to be accurate for what I need it to be, um, especially because I've calibrated it within the range of what I'm working on, uh, excluding diesels, of course, that go up to 24 volt or 26 volt battery systems because uh, they have two, two batteries in series, uh, most 12 volt systems, I know that this is fairly accurate within a couple percent of a calibrated device. Um, so I'm gonna check this probably every six months, I'll keep it in my toolbox, uh, throw it in my tool bag, take it with me, 
working in environments where I don't want to take one of my expensive meters with me. But that is how you adjust it. I'm going to try and get a close-up of these adjustment pots. So, there is one of them right here. And then we have a couple of them here. Uh, these are the through hole. If you take this this uh, circuit board off right here, you can get access to the front of the pots. But what they've done is they've drilled a hole in the back of this PCB so that you can get a very fine micro screwdriver and get it in there and turn that pot from the back side. Uh, but we have our CL and FL uh, pots here, which is our Celsius and Fahrenheit. And then we have our RPM and dwell down here. Um, so that's our RPM adjustment and dwell adjustment. Uh, I still haven't figured out what this TH is. I'm going to have to pull the manual on it and see what it does. Um, and then we have our Hertz up here, uh, which you'll need to hook up to a VFD or something that puts out a, a frequency duty cycle um, to be able to adjust that. But I'll, I'll probably do that in a different video. Uh, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the results. And if you know somebody who's got a uh, decent to high-end meter, you can calibrate your cheap meters to be as accurate, especially at the low voltage range, um, so that you, you know what you're looking at. You're not, you know, fighting your tools. That's the worst thing you can do uh, is to fight your tools or second guess your tools because uh, your cognitive load is so high when you're troubleshooting something. You don't want your tools to be inaccurate. You want them to be accurate. You look at them and you believe the reading the first time. Um, and that's partially why I prefer fluke meters, uh, because you can drop these things, you can bounce them off walls, throw them in your tool bag, bounce around your truck, um, and they're very rugged and reliable, um, especially when you get them calibrated at, uh, or from fluke or a third party source um, on a regular base, regular interval. Uh, you know for a fact that what you're looking at is what it is and you don't have to second guess your meter. So it takes a little, little load off you mentally. Um, when you're troubleshooting something. So uh, that's it for this one. I'm gonna get this meter button back up, put it back in my toolbox. Uh, if you got any questions, post them below. I'll get them answered as best I can. Um, if you wanna see any other videos or any other adjustments, also post that below and I'll try and get that done. Um, if you liked what you saw here, please comment and or, uh, rate and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.